All right, so this video is going to be all about scope. Now scope is kind of a beginner level topic. However, even if you're not a beginner, I recommend you watch this video because there might be some topics that I go over that you didn't already know. So first, I just wanna go ahead and say, if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So I'd like to start by talking about scope as a whole. So scope can be thought of as the area in which a variable is visible. Now please note that the following is under the assumption that you are not using strict mode. If you aren't sure what that means, please don't worry about it for now. Just understand that this is how scope works naturally in JavaScript without strict mode turned on. Let's take a look at this function. Here I have a function called add 20, which accepts a number, sets a variable called add, and then returns num plus add. And below, we are simply logging add. Now, as you can see here, if we run this code, we end up with a reference error. This is because add is bound by the scope of the function, and we are trying to access it outside of the function's scope. In other words, add is not visible outside of its scope. Let's have a look at another example. In this example, we are setting a variable called num equal to five, and we're using let. And above it, we are trying to log num. And this works as you'd probably intuitively expect. Since the variable num has yet to be defined, you end up with a reference error from trying to access a variable that does not yet exist in memory. However, what would happen if we were to change let to var? Now think about this. Declarations made using let and const are evaluated at runtime, but var declarations are not. So we end up with undefined here instead of a reference error. Have a look here. The fact that the interpreter knows about the existence of these variables before they are declared is due to something known as hoisting. So I wanna take a moment to talk about hoisting. Now, what exactly is hoisting? Well, variable declarations are figuratively hoisted to the top of its scope. So what does that mean? Well, it means that due to the way that the JavaScript interpreter works or JavaScript interpreters work, you can imagine that variable declarations are moved to the top of its scope and then are set at the point that you defined them, either at or before runtime, depending on if you are using var or if you're using let or const. Sounds a little bit confusing, but let's go ahead and look at an example. So let's have a look at this example right here. I want you to notice that this example gives us undefined when we log it. Now let's look at this example. The only difference here is that we've changed var to let, but this example gives us a reference error. Both variables are hoisted. However, the difference is that variables defined with const and let are evaluated at runtime. Let's take a second to prove that let declarations are in fact hoisted. So as you can see here, we have a variable called car, we're assigning it using let and we're setting it equal to a and then we have a code block underneath this that will always run because true is always true. And we are trying to console.log car. Now if the line below it here, the one that says let car equal b, if this line didn't exist, it would log a. Now even though car is defined in the global scope, and the local version of car is declared after our console.log, we still get a reference error. This means that our local let declaration is actually being hoisted and the log function is aware of it. But due to the way that JavaScript interpreters work, we are simply unable to access it at this point. The time in which a let or const declaration is not yet available at runtime is known as the temporal dead zone. This can be a little bit confusing, but it will be helpful to understand in certain debugging scenarios. Now let's move on. A variable's declaration is hoisted but the definition is not. So essentially the following two examples will produce the exact same outcome. So here we're console.logging car, and then after it, we are assigning it using var. And as you know, this logs undefined. The second example here, we are creating a variable called car, but we're not assigning it yet. Then we're trying to log car, and then we're assigning a to car afterwards both log undefined. And you can think of the first example as essentially being what you're looking at right here. That's one good way to visualize hoisting. Now, one last thing on hoisting for now. Function declarations are also hoisted to the top of its current scope, but differently than variables. The function definition is also hoisted with it. For example, take a look at the square number function which accepts a number and then squares. And notice how we're logging square number four above the function. This function works fine because the interpreter loads the function and its definition into memory before running through and executing the code here. Now I have a video that goes into greater depth about functions in JavaScript that I will link in the description below. So there are actually a few different types of scope in JavaScript to talk about. The first one I wanna talk about is the global scope. Now there are a few different ways to utilize the global scope in JavaScript. So let's talk about the easiest way first. So here we are simply setting a variable called global var and we're setting it outside of any other scope. Then inside of our concat string function, we are accessing global var. We have access to this variable inside of our function. 
We call this global scope because every other scope within this module has access to global var. Notice that the function concat string has access to the global var. Let's take a look at another method of accessing the global scope. Instead of returning the string inside of concat string, let's set it as a property on the window object. So the window object can be thought of as the global object inside of the web browser. Let's then see if we can access it inside of our log string function. So in this example here, we're still setting global var the same way we did previously, but inside of concat string, we are setting a new property on the window object called concat, and we're setting it equal to string concatenated with global var. Then inside of log string, what we are logging is actually window.concat. As you can see, variables in the global scope can be accessed by both of these functions. It is often best practice to avoid setting variables in the global scope if possible. This is because we often want to avoid other parts of our code accessing and changing values that are used elsewhere in the code. That can lead to some unexpected behavior, something to keep in mind. So let's move on to block scope. Block scope is where things start to get a little bit more tricky, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Let and const are block scoped. What this means is that variables declared using const and let are bound to the block that they are defined within, but var is not. Let's take a look at some examples to get a good understanding of what this implies. Let's look at this if block. Clearly true is equal to true, so the code inside of this block will always run. Below, we are logging x. All of the code within the curly braces are inside of a code block, which has its own scope. Since var is not block scoped, it is not bound by the block's scope and is visible within the console.log below. But let's look at the following variation of this. All we did here was change var to let. Since let is block scoped, it is bound by the block's scope and is not visible to the console.log. Since that's the case, we get a reference error here when attempting to access it. The same would happen with const. Now I want to show you an interesting example using the same exact example, but let's flip true to false and see what happens with hoisting here with var. Now you know that false is false, of course, and so therefore this code block will not run. Since var is not block scoped and binding declarations are also hoisted mixed with the fact that var declarations are evaluated prior to runtime, we get undefined here instead of a reference error. So in other words, we still have access to var even though this code block never runs. All right, so the final type of scope that I wanna talk about in this video is function scope. Again, I have a video that talks about JavaScript functions and sort of the nuances between the different ways you can define functions, and I've linked that in the description below. I highly recommend you check that out after this video. But let's go ahead and talk about function scope now. Function scope is slightly different than block scope in a few key ways. So we already talked about one of the unique aspects of function scope in terms of hoisting, so I want to talk about another unique aspect of function scope, which is that any variable binding made within a function is bound to the scope of that function. That's different than block scope because only let and const declarations are bound to block scope. Bindings declared using var are not bound to block scope. However, they are bound to function scope. Let's use an example to demonstrate. Here we have a function called is even, which takes a number and then returns whether or not it is even. And then below we are logging is even. But notice that we're logging is even and not the function is even. We're trying to log the value value is even, which is defined inside of the is even function. Now notice that we are defining it using var. When we run this, we get a reference error, and that's because we are trying to access is even outside of its scope, even though it was defined using var. Remember that var is not block scoped, however, it is in fact bound to function scope. Now I know that scope in JavaScript can tend to be a little bit confusing at first, but the longer that you code in JavaScript, the more intuitive it will truly become for you, and you won't have to think about it when you're writing code. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.